Once again, all confirmed customers, please report to gate 57. The aircraft will be departing shortly. Mm -hmm. I look really tired, don't I? See these bags under my eyes? Charging me an extra baggage fee. So I've been up since 4.30 this morning. Let me rephrase that. Since 4.30 yesterday morning, it's now midnight 03. And I was supposed to be boarded a half hour ago. But you see back here? There's no plane there. So... It's a good thing I have a really long layover in Houston. I was planning to sleep on the plane, but I am not gonna fall asleep here at the gate and miss my flight like I did on my way to my friend Kate's wedding. It's been a long day and it's gonna be a long day until I hit New York, get to my cousin's house. Hopefully these bags disappear before SopranoCon starts. So I've made it to Houston, finally. Uh, I slept through the entire flight. I don't even think I made it till takeoff. Yeah, I don't even remember takeoff, to be honest with you. And then I woke up once to readjust the way I was sitting, fell right back to sleep, and then woke up again right before landing. And so I'm in the Houston airport, in Bush, I believe. And there's a restaurant here called Cadillac. And I'm loving how there's just a little scan menu. I didn't have to talk to anyone, didn't have to wait for the waitress, nothing. There are some good things that came out of Corona, like efficiency. But I just discovered mango lemonade. Where has mango lemonade been my whole life? Now if I could get some tequila in here, which I probably could, that would be maximum. And uh, the other cool thing is the view of the plains from where I'm sitting. Also, I've been reading Dr. Melfi or Lorraine Branco's book and I posted about it on Instagram and she mentioned me in her stories. Gave me a warm fuzzy when I got when I landed and got off airplane mode and saw that. A couple hours here and then onto the flight to Newark. That's obvious that I love to travel, right? So I've spent a lot of time in airports in my time. One of my favorite things about the airport. Nobody judges you for drinking at seven in the morning. They don't know what time zone you're coming from. My body could be on Tokyo time for all they know. Or, you know what? Flying can be stressful, so screw it. Have a Cadillac punch at seven in the morning. Who's gonna stop me, right? At first I wasn't too crazy about the price of this. Now I know it's because of how much tequila's in it. Finally in New Jersey. Car rental companies can really suck sometimes, you know? But sometimes they can also be really awesome. I would like to give a shout out to DeAndre at the Newark Alamo, who not only did he give me a car half the price budget wanted, but fun fact, the Alamo in Newark, New Jersey, has a deal that if you fly in, they don't charge the deposit. I mean, they don't charge the deposit anymore. You know, the hold fee. That process took me almost an hour. I'm headed into the city right now to spend the night at one of my cousin's house. But yeah, I'm in New Jersey and I'm alive. And I'll, about in two hours, I'll be in New York. Hopefully still alive. We'll see. If you could. Make it here, you can make it anywhere, it's up to you, 
New York, New York. What the hell's going on here, people? You think the LA guy would be used to traffic, right? This is a whole new kind of traffic, though. So I'm going through the Holland Tunnel, and uh, it's weird that it just came to me now, but I didn't check the forecast at all before coming to New York. I just, I know it's usually muggy and hot in July, but it could have been raining for all I know. I don't know. I just realized like I have, I, I packed like I was staying in California. And, uh, I'm lucky that it's gonna be dry, but how did I know that? I didn't, I just came completely ill-prepared. I just got lucky. I'll take luck, that's cool. So remember what I just got done saying about, hey, at least it's not raining, right? Ooh, look at that water on the windshield. Good morning, everybody. This is day two of my journey. It's, is it? I guess really it's day three. You see, day one was I got off work, rushed home, grabbed my bag, and headed down to Oxnard before Navy Federal closed because I bank with Navy Federal. And it's normally not a problem, but sometimes I have to actually do something in person and I have to drive two hours to the nearest Navy Federal. So I got there before they closed and then I drove to my friend Michael's office and Michael then bought me dinner because I left my wallet in my car at his office. Shout out to you, Michael. You're the best, Flash. And then we went back to his office to eat our dinner and grab my wallet. And then he was nice enough to drop me off at LAX. And let me tell you, LAX has gotten so much worse post-corona. Like people forgot how to drive through LAX because they weren't going anywhere. Then I waited until after midnight, which now you're caught up. So after midnight, that became day two. Flew most of the day yesterday. And then when I got to my cousin's house in New York, we went out to eat. It took me to a really great Tex-Mex place with really good margaritas called Five Burros. And then we went for dessert at a place called Martha's. It's just a couple blocks down the street. And we got home around, I don't know, 12, 12.30 this morning. And it's now 4.30 this morning. So I took a shower and then went to sleep. I took about a three hour nap. And now I'm on my way to Atlantic City because all the volunteers are supposed to get there at eight o'clock. So according to Google, with traffic the way it is at this time of the day, I should beat that and be there about 7.15. So I made it to New Jersey. I made it to Atlantic City. I'm here in the convention. I got my volunteer t-shirt and uh, I'm working the food court. I thought that was pretty fitting. You know, I am the cooking with the Sopranos guy. Hopefully you came here and you got a sausage and pepper sandwich from me. And now you're catching the video on YouTube later. Wouldn't I look great in this? But I'm pretty sure it doesn't come in extra fluffy. So I'm not here just by my lonesome. We have a team. <laughs> this is Julie and Tracy. Yeah, hello. Julie's a fellow Californian, turned turn New Jerseyite. Right. And then Tracy's a native. North Jersey girl, <laughs> so, And you moved here for the Sopranos. <laughs> that's right. Wink, that's what she tells. That's the story we're sticking with. That's right. And uh, over there, hiding. <laughs> no, it's not Ariana Grande, it's Nikki. She's, she's also part of, the, part of the food team. 
and uh, we're just kind of standing around until waiting for it all to until food's happen. ready. No, I'm not cooking any of it, which is kind of a relief, but <laughs> I'm still serving it, which you know I've got plenty of restaurant time. <laughs> so I'm getting the behind the scenes look at the food production because I was like, I'm curious where it's all being made. I'm just following Noah, leading me the way. Oh man, so this is the busy staff and these are all Michael's people from his restaurant, right? Michael has a restaurant North Jersey. Hey guys, hey everybody. I'm working the counter over there serving it up, so I wanted to come see the behind the scenes. Y'all doing great work in here. It smells delicious. Thank you, I'm gonna get out your way. Busy kitchen. Oh, look at the fresh bread. Hi, how you doing? They are crazy busy. I'm gonna get out of the way because I've worked in plenty of kitchens and the last thing you want is some asshole in the way when you're trying to spin around with a hot pot of sauce and just better to stand out of everybody's way. So what are we eating here? Um, we have cannoli that he said the, um, the shells are imported from Sicily and the cheese inside is his nonna recipe. So this one's traditional with chocolate chips. This one has crushed pistachios on it. Delicious. This one is dark chocolate powder and espresso. And this is almonds. So we're gonna have a delicious taste. You wanna go like lightest to darkest, right? Sure, why not? <laughs> now, so I I reference Guy Fieri all the time because my mouth's always just like, it's tough because I finish the dish and I'm like, oh, let me just play me eating it for you. And half the time it's still way too hot because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, it, it's so good. I'm burning my mouth right now. <laughs> Mike's on the speaker, just talking away. So I honestly don't know if you're gonna hear any of this. I'm not gonna, I'm not, no promises this is gonna make it or not. <laughs> but we're gonna go through all, so this is traditional. We're, some cannoli, we're doing yeah. cannoli tasting. This is traditional, right? Cheers. <laughs> oh my God. everything I hoped it would be. John Gotti just walked in. Pistachio. Pistachio. I'm Ladies. Ladies. Also known as pistachi in Italian. What? Pistachi. Pistachi. Clink. Clink. So like the pistachio tastes like it does taste like pistachio gelato. Almond. Almond next. Almond. Almond. Once you break through the almond layer. That's strong. I mean. Yeah. And the amaretto. All right. There's a lot. Good. But it was definitely a step up from the pecan. It's a heavier flavor. Way heavier. And it covers the cheese a little bit. Guys, this okay. is your time. Yes, yeah, so it's a tiny thing. Thank you. And all okay. Espresso dark chocolate, the owner's favorite. Espresso dark chocolate, the owner's favorite. <laughs> that was a really big bite I took. I love it. Probably my favorite. Yeah. Mine is the original. The original? Yeah. The espresso is my favorite. Oh. Oh. Look, look at these guys. Look at the dedication oh. here. Oh, flash <laughs> Look at this guy. Maron 5. Eh. The sun sets on a long day at SopranoCon. It's a lot of fun today. 
met a lot of cool people. Saw a lot of cool people. My feet are really tired. I'm really tired. And uh, this is my room with a view of Atlantic City. Start the whole thing again tomorrow. Well, good morning, everybody. This is day three or four, depending on how you count it, of my adventure. It's definitely day, well, it's either day two or three of Chronicon, depending on from when you count, if you count from Friday night's dinner. Anyways, yeah, yesterday was good. I had a lot of fun. Feet hurt. Got a blister on one foot. Oh, what is that? Looks like I cut myself shaving. Yeah, got a blister on my foot. I've worked the restaurant industry, but I was a few pounds lighter. And uh, these shoes are, I've only worn them like three times or something like that. So yesterday was really break-in day. And uh, might not have been as comfy as I thought they were. So anyways, I'm gonna drop my bags off in the car and then come back and go join the food booth again for another day of SopranoCon. Well, my time here on the East Coast is coming to an end. I had a great breakfast with my cousin and his wife at a cold classic diner near their house. And now I'm leaving New York City, heading to Newark Airport. I'm stuck in traffic right now, but it's, it's moving at least. Figured I'd get these thoughts out here while they're still pretty fresh. Soprano Con was really great experience. Even though I was working through it, I still got a chance to go around and mingle with some people. So that was pretty cool. I got to talk to Jerry Adler, uh, the gentleman who plays the role of Hesh. Mr. Hesh, man, uh, what was your uh, favorite dish in the series that you had on set? I remember one day we ate spaghetti and meatballs for six hours. Six hours of spaghetti and meatballs? We were all around the table and everybody had to get together their own shot and it took six hours. <laughs> oh my God. Even if the lace is dry, and even if you don't touch the body of the shoe, bacteria and virus migrate from the soul up. You seen this on TV? I gotta watch TV to figure out the world. And there's a, you didn't do a spit bucket then, right? We had a spit bucket. Oh, <laughs> True. Spaghetti and meatballs from there. Oh man, I, as fluffy a guy as I am, I don't think I could either. Right. <laughs> it was a good show. It was a great show. Do you have a good show? Mm -hmm. Do you have a podcast? I, I have a YouTube channel. Perfect. Yes. So thank nice. you. Super nice guy that he, he and his wife are. Uh, the hell did I just hit? He's really got a really easy going guy. Uh, didn't mind me asking and talking to him and asking him questions. Gotta get on the side of the lane real quick. Talk to David Proval, who played uh, Richie April. And Richie is a highly unlikable character in the show. Don't give me your fucking Manson lamps. You know, you, I fucking hate the way you make me fucking ride you. David Proval is a highly likable human being in real life. My YouTube channel is about, it's called Cooking with the Sopranos, oh. and I'm cooking all the dishes in the show. Oh, good. You're a chef. Yeah, I've messed around in the kitchen. Uh, do you have any advice on tripe and tomatoes? On what? Do you have any advice on cooking tripe and tomatoes? Tripe, tripe. I love tripe. <laughs> Women don't allow tripe in the kitchen. Leave out the tripe. <laughs> That is a great suggestion, yes. Thank you. Uh, that's what you brought to Carmela. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Richie, what a surprise. What brings you this way? How are you today, dear? This is a thank you for Sunday dinner. Some tripe and tomatoes I made. <gasps> oh, we got to be the only two people who uh, still like a tripe. Oh, <laughs> my God, Richie. Thank you. When you saw that Tony gave the jacket right. to right. the housemate's husband. And, and I found the butcher shop on 8th Avenue that yeah. had tripe and yeah. yeah. That was my research for that show. Then there was Mr. Federico Castellucci, who is American, 
uh, his, the Furio accent is part of the act. And I had two questions for him and was not disappointed with the answers. Okay, Signore, so when Tony brought you over from Italy and uh, convinced uh, Artie to have you cook in the restaurant, yeah. Did you act for the role? Did you actually learn how to make fresh mozzarella? No, I actually learned how to make fresh mozzarella. In fact, they, they shot it out of sequence and they actually used somebody else's hands. The, the guys who taught me how to make the mozzarella, they shot that before and they just used those hands. They should have used my hands because I was doing a good job. I have wonderful hands. Oh, thank sir. you, thank you. So, uh, any advice for me when I make it? Yeah. Just make sure you got the you got to keep the curd in there nice, nice and long, you know, until it gets warm and soft, and then you start kneading it, and then uh, you know it gets to a certain point where you just got to you know, pull it out, make it into a little ball, and put it aside. Excellent. I, I will keep that in mind. Thank you very much. You got it. So, anyways, I'm looking forward to making my own fresh mozzarella with buffalo milk. Funny enough, John Fiori, aka Gigi, one of Tony's capos, actually had the toilet seat on his uh, little memorabilia memorabilia table. Those who haven't watched the show, Gigi goes out of the show kind of like Elvis. How much longer, Skip? I gotta take a leak. Jesus. And I loved his response when I asked him, what do you put on a turkey sandwich? I'm here with John Fiore. Greetings. AKA Gigi. And uh, so I'm good. I'm doing every dish that's in this show. Yeah. And I, one of the more notable dishes that involve you, of course, what do you normally have on a turkey sandwich? You had to mention turkey sandwich. <laughs> hey. Go, Jake. Hey, Jake. My wife made some turkey sandwiches. Anybody wants one? Yeah. A little bloated from Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, 1982. Fucking turkey. It's like spackle in my bowels. Nothing moves. What I normally have on a turkey sandwich is a little bit cheese of any kind, American cheese, and mustard. I don't do mayo. I used to do mayo. I quit. Or sometimes, you know, like if it's a Thanksgiving type turkey sandwich, you put the stuffing and the cranberry right in it. But normally a sub shop, quick in and out, a little mustard, a little, uh, little cheese on the turkey. You know what happens with turkey, right? Plugs you up. <laughs> it's like spackle in the bowels. Not the most. <laughs> Ray Arbuzo, the actor behind Little Carmine or Carmine Jr. <laughs> you know, there are times in the show where you kind of want to just want to smack Carmine. Your brother Billy, whatever happened there? All right, Ted. Whatever man. happened there? Jesus Christ, Carmine, what the fuck? Why would you possibly bring that up? But Ray is just such a great guy. Ran into him multiple times in the hallways and such, and was always happy to take a picture with anybody. Uh, he surprised me by remembering his line exactly. What can I get? Uh, seared ahi, mixed greens, and an iced tea, please. You know what? Give me a Nano Palmer instead of the iced tea. Okay. I always enjoy those, but it never occurs to me order one. So then I asked him, well, I know that's how little Carmine likes his ahi. How do you like your ahi? Hey. Morning, Mr. Abruzzo. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. So question, yes. uh, aside from the Arno Palmer, yes. which is a fairly basic recipe, yes. what is your preferred method of uh, having ahi? I like my ahi seared with mixed greens, sometimes with an iced tea, but actually, you know what, make that a Nano Palmer. I always enjoy those, but it never occurs to me to order one. <laughs> well, that is the verbatim line. But yeah. what, is, what is Ray? Or no, ahi? Ray like Ray does like some seared ahi. I, you know, I will I will get a nice piece. I get a nice piece of fresh ahi. I'll throw it on the barbecue very quickly. Just sear it on all sides. Boom! I'm good to go. All right, that's all I'll make it then. <laughs> now we all know I'm not a big fan of seafood, but I am always willing to try things. So I am looking forward to shooting 
the Ahi episode of my show simply because of this an interaction with Little Carmine. Jean Kusamata, the nosy neighbor who uh, always felt the need to let people know that the Sopranos were in this thing of ours. How, how about them? Do you know if everything's okay over there? As far as I know. Well, we'll go talk to them. Probably you should. They're in them. Pardon? <laughs> Nothing. They're different. For this neighborhood, they're a little different, that's all. She was played by the very lovely Sandra Santiago. The food item that most related to her, I felt like, was the ricotta pie scene. Joan, hi. Is this a bad time? Always. <laughs> Come on in. Regard pie with pineapples. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was in the neighborhood. My mother's foot surgeon is over here, so. Oh. Now, technically, it's Carmela who makes the pie. But since she was in the scene anyways, I figured I'd ask her what her advice on, on making ricotta pie was. So, uh, Sandra, uh, quick question. With ricotta pie, do you have any advice for me when I make it? Ask mama. Ask mama, <laughs> all right. Ask your mother. Because, to be honest, Sandra doesn't know how to make a ricotta pie. <laughs> Well, asking my mom doesn't help because my mom's not about ricotta pie. But then Sandra went on to tell me about her pasta sauce, which actually sounds really good. But I do make other stuff. I know how to make uh, uh, lasagna, misaka. Um, uh, I make a great sauce. That's my own good. fresh sauce. Oh, okay. Yeah, with fresh tomatoes with fresh uh, uh, herbs and spices and I put mushrooms in them and uh, onions, garlic. Sounds That's delicious. My, my, my husband says my sauce is amazing. I, I bet it is. <laughs> All right, well, thank I look forward to your show. Thank you very much. Okay. A few of my other actor interactions. Uh, I got to talk to the Mr. King of New York himself, Johnny Sack. Played by Vincent Corato, uh, real nice guy. He did refuse to do a video for my YouTube, which I don't blame him at all. Contract reasons couldn't be done, couldn't be helped. So, but he will gladly do a cameo for you, and I'll go ahead and put his cameo link in the description of this video down at the bottom here so look out for that uh, if you'd like to send a birthday greeting or something to a friend of yours from Johnny Sack it can be done I also had a quick short conversation with the absolutely beautiful Oksana Lada we know her as Tony's Russian Goomba and Irina whose favorite drink is vanilla stoli Hello. Tony, it's me. Don't hang up. Do you really think I want to call you? I think you're drinking and dialing. I can smell the vanilla stoli from here. Well, I wanted to ask her if she had any tips for drinking vanilla stoli, to which Oksana confessed to me she doesn't drink vodka. <laughs> so that made it kind of difficult to ask her for a cocktail suggestion but it was very nice speaking to her. Anyways, had a few nice encounters with Annabella. Uh, you remember her as Gloria Trillo, Globe Mercedes. Another Guma of Tony's. She was nice enough to do an autograph for a virtual friend of mine, Debbie. She's the account manager for the Instagram members only. So if you're not following that Instagram yet, you should. I'm, I'm gonna put that in the description to this video also. Debbie's a lovely woman and always posting some interesting meme or factoid. I was gonna ask her about London broil, but it was the end of the day, she was kinda tired. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life piece of shit. You know what, here, take your dinner. 
And she was nice enough to do an autograph for Debbie. I figured I'd bothered her enough. Welcome to the Holland Tunnel. I very unfortunately missed a chance at talking to Uncle Junior. Now, as much of a hard ass as Uncle Junior might be. I'm sitting here like patients on a monument waiting for discipline to be handed down. The actor behind the role, Dominic Chianesi, is an absolute sweetheart, apparently. Every fan that came up to me and talked to me about their interaction with him was great. The guy goes so above and beyond for the fans. He, uh, you know, he's not a spring chicken, but he sat there and did as many autographs as he possibly could uh, before he just was burnt out. It's not bad when he's had a few bookers. One fan came up and told me that he actually sang to her. The person who had quite possibly the longest consistent line was Lauren Bracco, aka Dr. Melfi. She saw as many fans as she possibly could with her time restraints. And it's amazing watching fans interact with her. They rebuilt the office, which I got a couple pictures in there. But when you're in the office with her, you almost forget she's an actress and you just want to start unloading your problems on her. Now on my way to New Jersey, while I was still sitting in LAX, I was actually reading her autobiography, her book, on the couch. After reading that, I knew that her mom was British, but it still didn't stop me from asking if she had a recipe for minestrone soup. See, the reason is, of all my episodes so far, I've been really happy with how the dishes have come out. The one dish that I was not happy with was Dr. Melfi's minestrone soup. I don't know, I, I feel really 50-50 about this one. Now, even though Lorraine Bracco didn't write the recipe, I still thought it would be really neat to ask if she had a recipe, and then I could redo that episode for all of you. I think a little later on, I'm gonna revisit minestrone. I'm gonna look up a Look up an authentic recipe and say this is Dr. Melfi's actual minestrone, actual Dr. Melfi's minestrone soup. Well, when I asked her, she goes, you were the one that reading my book, right? And I said, yes. She goes, then you know my mother was British. I don't have any Italian recipes from her. And I said, well, what about your grandma? You had the grandma around? She said, no, I didn't learn her many of her recipes either. So. No minestrone soup from Dr. Melfi. We'll just have to settle with what we got. But she is a gem of a human being. Super awesome, super great. Thoroughly enjoyed my short amount of time in the office with her and was glad to be able to serve her a salad. Also talked to Jason Cervone for a little while. Uh, you would know him as Jackie Jr. Didn't take any selfies or video with him, however, because I was in the middle of uh, serving all the actors food but a much more likable person than Jackie Jr. is. I gotta be honest, it was a little tough being around Jason Sabone. You can definitely tell this guy spends a lot of time in the gym. I'm straight and all, but damn, he's a good looking man. And not to mention, he got to kiss Meadow Soprano on screen. Super jealous. Jamie, not a friend. And not ashamed to say that you were one of my celebrity crushes growing up. Also not ashamed to say you still are. I think your husband is a very lucky man. Since we're on the theme of people who are nicer than their characters, Mikey, not only was he in men's clothing, he was in a really nice suit both days. Super gracious when I was, I was walking around taking everybody's orders. He was super insistent on giving me a tip, which you know, I'm broken up, I didn't really fight it. But he, like me, was a waiter. I might or might not have just taken a wrong turn, but we'll find out. So I made it to Newark Airport. Turns out that wrong turn I thought I made wasn't too bad of a turn, because I, I still made it here with plenty of time. Had a tiny Jack Daniels bottle with a little bit left in it. And I was like, well, that's not gonna make it through security. So I bought a Pepsi and uh, drank the rest of the Jack in it. Now just hanging out a little ways from the gate, waiting for my flight to Nashville. 
I went from Nashville to LAX. I feel like my voice is pretty shot right now. A couple of the other people that I didn't get a picture with were um, Dan Grimaldi, who he played the, the twins, Patsy and Philly. A super nice guy, real chill. Robert Funato, who he played Eugene. Uh, Eugene's character got an inheritance and Tony wouldn't, neither Tony nor the FBI would let him move to Florida and so he hung himself. Also, real nice guy. Marty Pasquale, also uh, talked to him for a little bit. He played Bert. Uh, we see Bert die at the hands of Silvio. Then there were some people who were there as part of just mob movie fest, but not necessarily so soprano characters themselves. I'm thinking about the, some of the cast members to Breaking Bad, which includes RJ, I don't know how you pronounce it. Is it Mite or Mitty? I think it's Mitty. Anyways, uh, the guy who played Walter White's son. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey. Hey, happy birthday. Well, thank you. You're late. Again. There was no hot water. Again. Really nice guy. Really chill, laid back. Just down to earth. I feel kind of bad I didn't get a picture with the twins, Luis and Danielle um, Moncada from Breaking Bad. They're Honduran, like me. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you've heard me refer to the fact that I'm Latino before. Well, not all Latinos are Mexican. To be specific, I am Honduran. I was actually born in Honduras. And so were Luis and Daniel Mon Moncada. And like I said, we just got so caught up talking about meatball sandwiches and the ravioli that I brought them that totally forgot to take a picture with them. And so, you know, oh well, maybe next year if they're there. Also in the Breaking Bad world though, uh, is Gus, played by Giancarlo Esposito. Actually, he was walking by the food booth and I was like, hey Gus, and he walked over and he's like, what are you serving? And I was like, well, I'm serving chicken. And he goes, you got some fried chicken for me? And I, I was like, yeah, yeah, I got you some fried chicken. And so I, I served him some tenders. I couldn't remember the, the name of the restaurant, Los Pollos Hermanos. I remember it was like, Los Hermanos Locos, or Los, Los Pollos Hermanos, or, I, I couldn't remember the exact wor wording, but I remember Pollo and Hermanos was involved. If you've never watched Breaking Bad, Giancarlo Esposito's character, Gus, is the owner of a restaurant chain called Los Pollos Hermanos, and that's how he helps smuggle the meth. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. My name is Gustavo, but you can call me Gus. I kind of felt like I was baptizing John the Baptist because, you know, I was serving him chicken. That's kind of like serving Colonel Sanders chicken in a way. I just got to serve some uh, chicken to the owner of uh, Los Pollos. We're going to check it out and see. It looks good to me. Los Hermanos. I'll give you a report. <laughs> right. Yes, and man, I love Anthony's chicken. Anthony, right? Yep. I love Anthony's chicken. It's the best ever. <laughs> But he was a lot of fun, and I wasn't expecting the shout out that he gave me, but there it is. Hands down though, and I, I kind of saved the best for last, Aida Turturro. And in case you're wondering, uh, she is related to John Turturro. It's uh, their cousins. Aida plays Janice Soprano, Tony's older sister, and you know, Tony and Janice don't have the best relationship. You're completely transformed. What can I say? You look good, Janice. Hey, you look pretty good, Janice. You are a giant asshole, you know? And a little insight into my personal life. Uh, I, I do have an older sister, and we don't talk as much as I would like to. I would love for us to have more of a, a Michael and Connie Corleone relationship, but just distance and just life gets in the way. So anyways, I thought it would be really funny to have Aida as Janice say some joke like hey this is Janice Soprano and I just wanted to tell you to treat your Tony you know better than I treated my Tony I thought something like that would be kind of funny and cute right Aida <laughs> Aida grabs my phone 
and she delivers this minute long message about the importance of family and brotherly sister relationships. Having a sibling, having family is so important. It was a message that was just for me and my sister. So I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but it was really sweet and she made it up on the spot. She just spoke from her heart. She was the nicest with her fans. She, you stood in her line and it felt like it didn't move because she was taking so long with each person, giving them time, talking to them. She would grab a person, pull them in tight, give them a hug, like she knew them for years. It was just really great watching her with the fans. All in all, a really great weekend and I'd really like to thank Mike C who, you know, you didn't have to be as prompt with your email replies as you were. You're a really busy guy, you got a lot on your plate, and yet you were responding to emails like at crazy hours. That's really just awesome to see people like that. And Mike M, throw things together. And then Rob, it was really great being on your team. Happy to volunteer with you anytime. And tell Alyssa that I'm sorry I got all my names wrong and I was calling calling her by the wrong name the whole time. Thankfully, I'm pretty run out of things to say because at this point, my voice box isn't really functioning. So that's basically my wrap up of SopranoCon 2021. If you're there and we talked to the food booth, great. Hopefully you're subscribing to my channel right now. And if you weren't there, I highly encourage you to add the SopranoCon Instagram account and the Mom Movie Con Instagram account for updates on when the next one will be. Uh, again, Mike and the, his team did a really great, I think they did a really great job. And if you were there, if you have any suggestions, I'm sure they would love to hear it. Go ahead and send them a message on those two Instagram accounts that I mentioned. They're really responsive. Um, they like hearing from the fans and they really want to just put on a good show for us. And that's what I'm trying to do. So if you haven't yet, please go ahead and click subscribe. And I look forward to doing some more cooking with the Sopranos and seeing what else the future holds. And maybe I'll see you at the next SopranoCon.